Good day viewers, Sepp here, and guess what? We've had success with the PW50 wiring. It now has a spark. You beauty. I'll give you a look. Those of you that are watching this for the first time, Problem we had with this PW50 was there was no spark when we first got it. So we, we ordered some wiring off eBay and I'll give you a look. This wiring here is the first lot of wiring that was on the bike when we first got it. No spark. Then what we did, we purchased this stuff here off eBay, put that on, still no spark. We put all the parts on, including the condenser, sorry the coil which is on there at the moment. So then after this one, we bought another lot from a separate supplier, which is it. That's back in the bag, and that didn't work either. This wiring we've got here on the bike now, the flywheel, the stator in behind there, this wiring, all the way up round to the top, up the top here, in here. That's all off a genuine Yamaha PW50. We had to get it second hand. We were lucky to find a bike that was being trashed and the, and the wiring actually worked. It did have a spark. So we ended up with the wiring off that. And of course now we have a spark. So the next part of the journey is we're going to take off this oil feed. We're going to put the carburetor on. We're going to put a choke cable in. Put it back together and see if it'll run. So that's where we're at the moment. Okay, so we're just going to unscrew this oil pump. And we're not sure why that eBay wiring didn't actually work. Like I said, we tried two separate lots. I lost a bit of patience at the end there. I, I could have started stripping the wires right down and trying to work it through, but in the end we tracked this old bike down that was working. So we thought, well, let's bite the bolt. Let's see if we can get that, and we did. And of course, that's what we've put on it. So maybe at some stage down the track, I might try and pull all that wiring apart, that eBay stuff, and just see if I can work out exactly where it was, what the problem was. But um, I don't think I'll probably find it. I know I would put a fluoro light above this if I wasn't filming. But when I film with the fluoro, the lights go sort of funny, gives it a funny effect. So don't bother. We're doing away with this oil pump. Um, going to mix our own fuel and make it work that way. Just take that off. So that works. Just put that down there. Just prise all this off. Okay, not damage anything in here. And there it is there. Okay. So I've just taken the front part of it apart, so we're not going to use it again anyway. That's what it looks like. If you haven't seen inside there, I can screw that back on anyway, so that's what it'll be. Looks like it needs a bit of a clean up. I'll give you a bit of a look at that. Let me give you a bit of light in there. There you go. That's what it looks like in there. Let's give it a bit of a clean up. And we'll put this plate on. That's what it looks like. A couple of replacement screws. There's the plate. Blanking plates all on. I've cleaned it all up. That's what it looks like. It was a bit difficult to get on. I had to change the o-ring off this is the one that came on the the blank and plate but it's just too big probably because it was new i just couldn't get the thing to slip in into the casing so i took it off i took the old one off this which was which was in here and i've put the um, old one on the blanking plate that one i'll just put back over there for now we're not going to use it again but it's all there anyway so so the next stage is I'll put the um, choke cables through and assemble the carburetor. 
I've been working on this carburetor now for a few hours and of course the problem is these new cables, accelerator cable and the choke cable did not fit the top of this carburetor. This is the new aftermarket one. I've got the original one here I've been pulling apart and we've even got another one which is a Yamaha one sitting here as reserve supply parts. So I've got some cables down here which I've tried to use to try and make all this work. So this cap here is off the new carburetor and this arm here was too long. You couldn't get any adjustment out of it. So that's what it looks like. So I've had to cut this off here on this one. We've still got a bit of adjustment here so we can get this the right length to sit in the carburetor. Um, so we're just about ready to put it back on and make sure that we can get the adjustments. Now the choke one in particular, this choke cable supposedly one for the job. Again, that doesn't fit. So what we've done there with this one is I've put the proper choke cable on that they've sent us, they've given us, but it's going to be a little bit too long. There is no adjustment possible on this choke cable. So what we'll do is It'll work, but we'll have to leave this a bit longer than normal. And that means the choke cable at the top, which I'll show you in a sec, is just going to sit up a little bit when it's in the, I suppose, the off position. And then when you want to use it, you just pull it up that little bit further, and that'll be enough to let the fuel come past and go into the carburetor. So this actually isn't an enrichner. It, it richens up the fuel. It allows extra fuel to go through when you use it. It's not like a normal butterfly type choke which um, clamps off the actual the air and makes it richer that way. So that's where we're at the moment. I'll give you a quick look at the top. So this is the choke cable here. It's in the right position, but it will sit about there when it's in the off position. And then when we want to use it and make it work and choke, it'll come up another lot like that to the next position. So it'll probably sit about there and you'll get that much out of it to make it work and then push it back down again somewhere like that i've now got the carby mounted we've got the air box on we've got our cables in position what we're going to do now is we'll put the fuel tank on we're going to run the fuel down into the carburetor i've just fitted up the fuel tank we've put in the fuel line the tap we've put a fuel filter in there got it connected up to the carburetor and then what we'll do is put together this exhaust system that still has to go on yet the muffler and then we're ready to start her up right oh here it is here we finally got it to run Here it is here and hasn't it been a saga and it really has been a test of this aftermarket stuff it doesn't just quite fit and just about everything we put on it we had to change modify new screws different different screws different bolts cut things off it but here it is here anyway I've just got to put some ties on it ran beautiful considering that was the first time we, we started it Really happy with it. It's taken time. It's certainly been a challenge. I'm sure little grandkids are gonna love it. We got some stickers to put on it yet. So there it is, at long last, almost finished. I'm just hoping when I pull those wheels off, I don't really find any more surprises with those brakes. So there it is there. I'm so happy it's working and it's running. Like I said, it took a fair bit of time. Any questions about it, just let us know in the comments. So that's it. Thanks for watching. 
and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.